no doubt we know that we are going through an unprecedented unparalleled time in the history of humanity we see all kinds of things happening yesterday as i was uh, browsing i came across that covid-19 has taken the life of more than 328000 people in the world i also noticed over 5 million people are infected by this covid-19 so far in the world the christian world lots lost its legendary apologist dr revi sakrias in the week that has gone by several of our friends lost their loved ones the tragedy is that we cannot even attend the funeral if the place is far away i want to pray that the ever presence of jesus may comfort you the peace of jesus that surpasses all understanding may console you and give you peace a us report stated that in the last week alone about 2.4 million people filed for unemployment totaling over 38 million job loss only because of covid-19 international labor organization sometime back predicted that as many as 195 195 million people may lose job only because of covid-19 the deccan chronicles reported that as many as 135 million people in india may lose their job partially or completely they also said about 120 million people are likely to be pushed down below poverty line in india we also saw cyclone amfa hitting the eastern coast of our country bringing casualties and damages economy is affected very badly and if i go on listing the losses i'm sure there is no end to it my question to all of us is amidst this crisis amidst all this difficulties dilemmas confusion uncertainty not being sure about what is going to happen do we have hope is there hope in christ i also came across tv reporters interviewing people asking them should religious worship places open some of them responded positively yes one day it should open i also noticed some people responding saying the god who did not come to our rescue in time of crisis why should we go to worship him in religious pla- worship places people are losing hopes my question is there hope in christ can we continue to trust in god amidst all these confusions and chaos and the definite answer that i have is yes of course we have hope in christ the word of god tells me tells to everyone who reads the word of god it tells very clearly that the lord jesus can walk into your crisis into my crisis and help us overcome the difficulties the question is what must you and i should do 
in order to find hope in Christ. Our subject for meditation this morning is entitled, Jesus Walks Into Our Crisis. Jesus Walks Into Our Crisis. Let's pray. Merciful, loving God, when the world is losing hope, when calamities, pandemic is tossing our life left and right, we have no other place to look to apart from you. This morning, as we open your word to meditate upon and find confidence and trust in you. Pour upon each one of us your Holy Spirit that we will not only understand the scripture but find that strong hope in Christ, the rock of ages that we can hold on to let come what may. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The subject for our meditation today, as I told you, is Jesus walks into our crisis. I want to thank uh, Pastor Sharon for reading the passage so beautifully. The passage is taken from the life of Jesus when he was here on earth. And three of the four Gospels that we have in the Bible records it for us. Matthew chapter 14, Mark and John chapter 6. Matthew gives us an added information of Peter taking that attempt to walk on the water to Jesus. Therefore, I've chosen to use Matthew's account for our meditation today. In all three of the Gospels that records this event, Jesus walking on the water, the preceding event is Jesus feeding the 5,000. So in all three, the immediate passage or even the before this passage is feeding the 5,000. Let's read Matthew chapter 14. We will be spending our time in this, mostly our time in this chapter. I would like to request you to open your Bibles wherever you are to this passage. Matthew chapter 14, verse 21. 22, but 21 I want to read in order to show you how the passage is continuing. Now, those who had eaten were about 5,000 men besides women and children. That is the end of the miracle of uh, feeding 5,000. Immediately, verse 22, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went upon a mountainside by himself alone to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. To find hope in Jesus Christ. Using this passage from the Bible, I ha I'm proposing 11 actions. Action number one that I get from this verse that we have just read is, remember, it is God who sent you here on earth. It is God who placed you where you are. If you read the text again, you will notice immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him onto the other side. It was Jesus who made them to sit or get into the boat and go to the other side. It was Jesus who instructed them to get into the boat and go. So my dear friends, 
the devil does not want us to remember that he jesus is the reason where we are jesus knows exactly where we are in the in the lesson that we have studied sabbath school lesson we we studied about the creation in the beginning god created god is our creator he is sustainer and redeemer he knows exactly where we are sometimes you know the devil uses the calamities the 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 pandemic difficulties problems in our lives to blind us to to put doubt in us about this fact that god is the one who sent us here that god knows where we are exactly the calamity sometimes causes us to ask this question where is god when it hurts because it seems god is so far away from us now if you look at the life of joseph god allowed him to be sold into slavery he was taken into egypt he was there in potiphar's house and because of his wife we know that he was imprisoned and joseph endured all this and in all this afflictions in his life he he did not distrust god rather he trusted and has been faithful to the god because he knew it was god who sent him there later on when his siblings and his parents came he told them it is god who sent me here because in all his afflictions joseph remained faithful and trusted in god who sent him there and complied to everything that was happening the bible reveals to us god took care of the famine through joseph if you look at esther what a life was hers she was brought to the palace and she was there and god placed her there and her realization of god placing her where she is helped her to continue to trust in god and her trust and faithfulness to god com- helped her to comply with the situations in life and we find ultimately god used esther to rescue the people of her tribe the jews if you look at daniel was a faithful man was taken into babylon as a captive daniel could have asked this question how can my god send me to this foreign land he did not ask that question instead he simply continued to trust and be faithful to the lord and as a result we know the beautiful book of daniel with all the f- prophecies in it is in our hands today my dear friends the devil doesn't want you to remember that it is god who sent you and if it is god who sent you where you are and if it is god who placed you where you are he knows how to help you he knows how to help you to overcome and protect you from the situation many things many conspiracies many theories many news everything is bombarding each one of us but be reminded action number 1 remember it is god who sent you it was god who sent the apostles whether or not they remembered that it was jesus who asked them to go to the other side quickly moving on to action number 2 be diligent servant of the lord who takes immediate action and do not delay now the word immediately is found in the gospel of mark more than 40 times the greek word euthus which actually means straight or direct immediately at once right away etc 
Mark presents Jesus as a busy servant who is running to carry out the mission that was given to him. My dear friends, followers of Lord Jesus, like our master, we got to be busy carrying out the targets, the goals, the, the purpose for which we have been placed in whatever positions it may be. Whatever job assigned to us, may we carry it out diligently. And as we, as we listen today, if the Holy Spirit is convicting you of a sin, do not delay. Confess right away. If the Lord is impressing that you need to get right with somebody, right after the sermon, why don't you make a call to that person, get right with him or with her? If the Lord is impressing that you need to settle this part of your life or you need to get rid of this aspect in your life, don't delay. Take immediate action like our Lord and Savior Jesus. We find throughout the Gospel of Mark, Jesus moving from one action to another. Mark is using this word immediately, immediately, and he was on a roll, moving. Let us be a diligent servant of the Lord who takes immediate action and do not delay. Action number three. Action number three, to find hope in Jesus. To find that peace of Jesus in us. Have quality, solitary time with the Lord. Have quality, solitary time with the Lord. Let's read Matthew 14, 23. Verse 23, it says, And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went upon a mountainside by himself, for what? To pray. Later that night, he was there <coughs> alone. Now, the account also says that he returned to the apostles walking on the sea only on the fourth watch. According to Jewish time calculation, they had four watches, six to nine, the first watch, nine to twelve, second, twelve to three, third, three to six, the fourth watch. In the night, Jesus returned on the fourth watch, which means he returned sometime early morning between three and six a.m. What was Jesus doing all this while on the mountainside? The Bible very clearly says that he was pr praying. I wonder what was he praying? And look at the context. What will you and me do immediately after a success such as feeding 5,000 men with just five loaves of bread and two fish? We would celebrate, am I right? Here, Jesus, disperse the crowd, send the disciples on the other side, and he went up onto the mountainside in order to ensure that he is not disconnected from his Father in heaven, that pride has not come into him to ensure that the source of power is ongoing in his life. He made sure, and he went up onto the mountainside. There he was praying. He was making sure that his connection with the Father is stronger than ever before. Spirit of Prophecy, Ellen White in Desire of Ages says, the crowd at that point, when they saw that miracle, wanted to declare him to be the king of the Jews. And the disciples also wanted. But Jesus did not permit he dispersed the crowd, asked the disciples to go onto the other side with force, and then he went, probably to ask the Father, is it the right time? My dear friends, when calamity strikes you, when pandemic is tossing your life left and right, when economy is going down and down, and you don't know what lies for us in the future, is God real in our life? 
Do we spend that quality time in solitude with our Father in heaven, ensuring that every spiritual power that we need to overcome the challenges of the life is ever flowing into my life? If Jesus needed to do, you know, needed that time with the Father to, to prevent the pride coming into his life, how much more do you think you and I need time with the Father? The fourth action in order to find hope in Jesus that I would like to propose is remember. There is no distance that is too far for Jesus. Remember, there is no distance that is too far for Jesus. Let's read Matthew chapter 14, verse 24. It says, But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. John's account of the same event tells us that the wind was so great and the distance was about three to four miles or four, uh, five to six kilometers. My dear friends, there is no distance that is too far for Jesus to reach out to you in times of trouble, in times of struggle, in times of crisis and calamity and pandemic and problems that you are not able to overcome in your life. Your life, my life, may be in the middle of a sea of problem, tossed by financial struggles, or sickness, or other difficulties, or by the, by, by the wind, so-called COVID-19, because it is against us. It is contrary to us. The disciples in the boat was tossed between uh, the, the, the howling waves. The, the strong wind was against them. And they appeared so far away from Jesus. But the Bible says it was only a walkable distance. Jesus could reach out to them in quick time. Sometimes we think my sin is so deep, so great. My Lord cannot reach to me. Sometimes I think I have gone too far away from God. He cannot come to me. There is no place too far for Jesus to reach out to you, my dear friends. My dear fellow believers in Christ, remember this fact that he is just a second away from you or a fraction of a second away from you. Am I willing to call upon him? Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1 says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Yes, my dear friends, the Lord's hand is not shortened. His ear has not reduced to death that he cannot hear. Action Number five, in order to find hope in Jesus. Remember, Jesus sees your struggles and no matter what, he will walk into your crisis. Remember what? That Jesus can see your struggle. No matter what, he can walk into your crisis. Let's read Matthew 14, verse 25, it says, Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. Mark tells us that Jesus saw the disciples struggling or straining at the oars because the wind was against them. My dear fellow believers in, in, in Christ, I don't know what Wind is really tossing your life. How you are going through turbulent times in your life. But Jesus can see that. 
The Bible also told us that Jesus was about, you know, four, five to six kilometers away, but Jesus could see their struggle. Though the deep sea separated the disciples from Jesus, he walked to them on the water. We know Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were in the fiery furnace. Jesus walked to them. No depth of water, no heat of the fire can separate you and me from Jesus to reach us. Therefore, remember, in order to find hope in Jesus, in order to have the peace of Jesus calming our life, remember this action, that there is no distance too far for Jesus to reach us. Action number six. Ask yourself, have you recognized Jesus or missed him when he passed by you? Have you recognized or missed him when he passed by you? Matthew 14, verse 26. <clears throat> verse 26 says, and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. Mark tells us why they were not able to recognize him. In Mark's account, we find that you know, the, the, the miracle of feeding 5,000 has hardened their heart. When I read uh, uh, Desire of Ages, page 380, uh, Sister White says there, unbelief was taking possession of their minds and hearts. Love of honor had blinded them. They knew that Jesus was hated by the Pharisees and they were eager to see him exalted as they thought he should be. Thus, the dis disciples reasoned until they brought upon themselves great spiritual darkness that they failed to recognize Jesus as he came to them. I don't know what is clouding our mind to the extent that we cannot recognize Jesus when he comes by us. Ask this question. Is the struggles in your life, the sickness, the difficulties that you're going through, the pandemic that is creating confusion and chaos in the world, is it creating, is it building a cloud in your mind that is, help, that is, that is preventing you from seeing your Lord and Savior Jesus? I'm reminded one day I was coming out of my house to attend the morning devotion in the auditorium. As I was walking, I saw the sun bright and beautiful in the sky. I could position the sun. And as I continued to walk, by the time I reached to the administrative building, I looked up to the sky again and I couldn't see the sun because a thick cloud came and covered the sun. And I, I was trying to position the sun. <clears throat> was it here or there? I could not. The sun of righteousness. Jesus should be the focus of our life every second of our life. Otherwise, clouds will be brought into our minds and before our eyes through calamities, through difficulties by Satan to prevent us from seeing and recognizing our Lord and Savior Jesus in order to avoid that. My dear friends, do not take eyes off the Lord your God Almighty. I want to ask the question sometimes, you know, the disciples were blinded by the blessing of seeing that feeding 5,000, the beautiful miracle. Has blessings in your life blinded you spiritually that you cannot see your Lord? To the question of unrighteous, uh, in, in Matthew chapter 25, 
We find, Lord, when did we see you angry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come in you, the, the righteous on the right side? Ask Jesus, when did we actually do all this for you? Matthew chapter 25, verse 40, Jesus responds by saying, And the king will answer and say to them this, Assuredly, I say to you, in as much as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. I want you to contemplate and ask this question. Did you ignore the needy in your surroundings? If so, you may have missed Jesus. Did you fail to see and hear the cry of the poor and needy? If so, you may have missed Jesus. Did you fail to comfort and, and, and pray for those who are grieving? If so, you may have missed Jesus. And if the Spirit of the Lord is convicting, you have missed Jesus, this is the right time. Get to Him, hold on to Him, and if you cry out, Lord, when you pass by me, I did not recognize, I failed to recognize you, kindly come back to me, and the Lord will be more than happy to come to you in quick seconds. Better late than never, as we go through the struggles in life, in order to find Peace in Jesus. Let us ask, has he come by us and I missed? And if so, find him. Cry out to him. He will come. He will come again. Let's move to the next action. Action number seven. Remember, it is God who takes the initiative and we just respond. It is God who who takes the initiative and we just respond. Let's read verse 27 of Matthew 14. <clears throat> verse 27 reads, But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. When he said it is I am, he was actually identifying himself as the Yahweh of the Old Testament. This explains exactly why, you know, the disciples and those who were in the boat finally worshipped him saying, you are really the son of God. And we, we, we also have an example in John chapter 8 verse 31 when Jesus said to the Pharisees that I was, I am, I, I am before, or before Abraham was, I am. The Pharisees took stones to throw at him. This very moment, as you're listening to me, my dear fellow believers in Christ, Jesus is taking an initiative to come to you, to make you realize something in your life. I don't know what it is. To help you realize some of our shortcomings. To, to bring us back to the right tracks that we will continue to journey with our Lord and Savior Jesus into eternity. To give us the right understanding, right perspective, so that we'll deal with situations in the will and according to the pleasure and purpose of our God Almighty. And therefore, my dear friends, do not resist the prompting of the Holy Spirit. You can close your eyes and you can pray as you listen to the message. You can talk to Jesus as he is communicating with you. I like this beautiful quote from Max Lucado, a, prophet, <clears throat> a great writer. He writes this way, Rather than ask God to change your circumstances, ask Him to use your circumstances to change you. Many a times we like to have good circumstances, good situations in life. We, we 
you know, we plead with God, give me this situation, give me that situation. Instead of asking God to change the situation in which we are, instead of asking God to change the place where he has placed us, let us ask him to change me using the circumstances or the situations or the places that he has placed us. Let's go on to the next action. Action number eight. Respond like Peter, but focus on Jesus. Respond like Peter, but focus on Jesus. Let's read Matthew 14, <clears throat> verses 18 to 30. 18 to 30. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. I like Peter for this. Verse 29, he <coughs> says, so he said, come. You know, our Lord was so friendly there. Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked, the Bible says, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. I as I told you, I like Peter because, you know, in Matthew chapter 16, we find when Jesus asked the, the, the <clears throat> disciples, who do you think I am? It was Peter who said, you are Christ, son of the living God. Jesus responded to Peter by saying, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. The same Peter, couple of verses down in Matthew chapter 16, when Jesus began to tell them the sufferings, the crucifixion, the, the, the persecution that Jesus will undergo, Peter said, Far be from it, my Lord, this will not happen to you. Jesus turned to Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of man. I wonder how in the world, in one moment, Peter was receiving vision from the Father above, and the other moment, he was being led by Satan to think like human beings. And I... That's why I said I like him because many of my attributes, many of my problems I can find in Peter. If you read uh, the <clears throat> Matthew chapter 14 verse 30, it, it says, uh, but when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. What does the verse say? When he saw what? The wind was boisterous. He was afraid and began to sink. Ellen White in Desire of Ages, page 381 says, Looking unto Jesus, Peter walks securely. But as in the self-satisfaction, he glances back toward his companions in the boat. His eyes are turned from the Savior, the wind is boisterous, the waves roll high and come directly between him and his master, and he was afraid. For a moment, Christ is hidden from his view, and his faith gives away. He began to sink. Yes, my dear friends, if pride, self-satisfaction comes into our lives, like Peter, we will turn our focus from the Lord Jesus. And sometimes the greatness of the challenges and the problems that you're facing may force you to look elsewhere and not Jesus. Through our unbelief and self-exaltation, Satan aims to take the life away from us. He wants to snatch our life. He wanted to drown Peter. The wind of COVID-19 may be boisterous. Your difficulties, your problems may be great. Your challenges may appear like the Himalayan mountain. In all this, 
If only we could fix our eyes on our Lord and Savior Jesus. My dear friends, He will help us to see through the problem. He will help us to overcome the challenges. Let's go to the next challenge. Meet. Sorry, next action. <clears throat> action number nine. Meet the need and then preach. Meet the need and then preach. What did or how did Pete, uh, Lord Jesus respond? Pete, when Peter cried out, Lord, save me. You know, he, he began to sink. And he, at that fraction of second, he cried out, Lord, save me. I'm glad that Peter looked back at Jesus and he could still see Jesus. And therefore he was able to cry out, Lord, save me. Jesus did not accuse him at that point. Jesus did not give him a lecture of faith there. Jesus did not wait for anything there. He, the, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 14 verse 31, and immediately, the word immediately is used by Mark, immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and then said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? I'm reminded of a story that my professor shared during one of the classes that I'm taking right now <clears throat> online. There was a swimming pool and uh, it had some security concerns and therefore there was a notice put up Dangerous to swim. Swimming is forbidden in this pool. Somebody came and jumped into the water. And he was in problem. He was struggling for his life. And when he cried out, somebody came out. And the story says, the man, the attender who came out to see what is happening, he began to give him a lecture. Can't you see what is in the bulletin or in the notice board? The man who is gasping for air in his all possibility said, kindly take me out of the water, then I'll be able to read. Many a times in our lives, in, in times of struggle, in times of need, we try to lecture. We try to preach, but the, but the reality is meet the need first and then preach. That's what Jesus' method is. He met the needs of people and then he bid them follow me and they followed him. Through our examples, through our exemplary life, let us meet the needs of people around us and then preach to them and they will follow us. Otherwise, it will be a tragedy. Quickly going to the next action in order to find peace in Christ. Action number 10. We are finishing. Only one more after that. Remember, when Jesus gets into your boat, the wind dies or loses its power on you. Remember what? When Jesus enters your boat, the wind dies or it loses its power on you. Let's read Mark chapter 6, verse 51. Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verse 51. It says, <clears throat> Then he climbed into the boat with them, and the wind, what? Died down. Praise God. When Jesus comes into our life, into our boat, into our family, into our institution, into our society, into our community, into our city, into our state, and into our nation, the crisis, the wind, the difficulty, the, the, the challenges either dies down or it loses its power on you. No matter what the wind is against you, if you allow Jesus to come into your boat, it will certainly stop the wind. If not, it will lose its power on you. For Jesus always comes with 
his peace that surpasseth all understanding sometimes i wonder when when i read the accounts of martyrs the first one stephen in the book of acts chapter 7 when you read you'll find he was being stoned to death and the bible and the spirit of prophecy says as the big stones were falling on him and blood was oozing out of him he was actually his face was glowing like an angel's face i wondered how it happens history tells when john has was being burned to death on the stake he was glad he was glad and singing praises unto god the peace of christ that surpasses all understanding dominated their life the pain could not overcome them rather they overcame the pain my dear friends i am not sure whether covid 19 will come to an end or not whether all the difficulties and challenges in your life will come to an end in the in the next week or so or not but one thing i can guarantee you from the scripture that the peace of christ that surpasses all understanding can keep you calm amidst of wind and horrendous uh, challenges and problems and difficulties in your life allow jesus to come into your boat that your house and your life may be at peace and if you allow jesus to come into your life into your boat life can never be the same matthew chapter 14 verse 33 says then those who were in the boat when jesus came into the boat when the, those who were there in the boat came and worshiped him saying truly you are the son of god yes my dear fellow believers in christ when jesus comes into your boat into your life you will know that he is truly the son of god when jesus came into the life of sacchius he knew that he is the son of god when jesus came into the life of nicodemus he knew that he is son of god when jesus came into the life of the samaritan woman he she knew that he is the son of god and she ran to tell to everybody i have seen the son of god and i pray that your boat may be your household your relatives that your boat may include your friends your colleagues your your relatives and so on and so forth i like another quote from max lucado it says you can't control the weather you aren't in charge of the enemy the sorry economy you can't undo the tsunami or unwreck the car but you can map out a strategy strategy remember god is in the crisis in this crisis quickly going to the last and final action that i want to share with you from this passage action number 11 have a passionate faith in god have a passionate faith in god read matthew chapter 14 verses 34 to 36 it it reads when they had crossed over they came to the land of gennesaret verse 35 and when the men of that place recognized him praise god the disciples could not recognize but when jesus reached the the other side gennesaret the men of that place recognized him sometimes being with jesus you know sometimes does not help us to recognize him naturally coming to church listening to messages may not necessarily always help us to recognize him the words continues to say they sent out into all the surrounding uh, and brought to him all who were sick mark actually records they ran and brought the sick how many of us ran to bring the sick and i'm reminded of the two disciples you remember on the way to uh, after the resurrection uh, they they could not uh, emmaus jesus uh, they were talking about jesus and jesus was walking with them they could not recognize jesus 
after a while when jesus unraveled the prophecies of the scripture and and removed the cloud uh, that was preventing them from seeing jesus they recognized jesus the the historian says it was more than 7 miles and they walked in you know in the evening and they reached uh, in the night immediately when they realized and recognized jesus they ran back to tell the disciples the good news here verse 36 of matthew chapter 14 says they begged him that they might only touch the hem of his garment and as many as touched it were made perfectly well they begged him that the sick people may just touch the tip of the garment and the bible says everyone touched were healed you require healing today you want spiritual healing you want physical healing have the passionate faith in jesus and when you come to him with such passion begging if only i you i can be touched by the message i can be touched by the word of god i can be healed and i'm sure the lord will bring the healing somebody out there may be receiving spiritual healing somebody out there may be receiving physical healing your the, the cloud that is preventing you from seeing jesus may be being removed praise god as we end the message i would like to invite each one of you to introspect bow down with me and pray let's pray a most gracious loving father in heaven you have spoken to us the message is clear to us though there is uncertainty in the world though there is confusion and chaos in the world you are real and the scripture has made it very clear that you can walk into our crisis our challenges though it may be like a himalayan problem if only we could fix our eyes on you and focus on you you will come into our boat when you come into our boat the crisis will die down or the power of the crisis to overcome us and discourage us will will be taken away we will be able to worship you in truth and spirit with full realization that you are christ son of the living god that realization will give us oh lord the faith passionate faith by which we will run to and fro to share the good news with our fellow beings lord help us to the the end be with each one of us I want to pray for everyone who heard me today and who will probably hear in the days to come may you touch their lives with the power of the holy spirit may you anoint each one of us that we will remain calm that we will have the peace of christ that surpasses all understanding for i ask all this mercies and wonderful blessings in the matchless and glorious name of our lord and savior jesus amen